Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the average ifs function in Google Sheets. And this is one of many videos meant for sports scientists, strength coaches, and sport coaches for using Google Sheets to get the most out of the information that they're collecting. And this is one of my favorite functions, mostly because it's very dynamic in that it's interchangeable with some other functions so that you don't have to, or formulas, so that you don't have to repeat things or that you can change things on the fly. So on the left hand side, let's pretend like we have a basketball team. We have dates, we have the names of our athletes, we have their positions and their rating of sleep quality uh, from a, on a scale of one to 10. And if we scroll down, dates are listed multiple times, athletes are listed multiple times. And this is what a data set might, might look like. And probably how one should look if you're collecting longitudinal data on a bunch of athletes. And what average ifs does is it enables you to get an average value, but with certain conditions or with criteria. So let's say that we wanted to get an average value of sleep quality for all of our point guards. Well, if we type in equals average, and you may be fam uh, familiar with this formula, and we were to select all of our values, which I've done by just clicking on column D, it'll highlight all of our, all of our values in our data set. That's not going to cut it because that's going to include players that are not point guards, and all we want is the average for point guards. Sorry, I just moved some stuff over there. I'm kind of doing this on the fly here. So if we just wanted the average value of point guards, we can do equals average ifs, open parenthesis. And now my face is in the way for some of it, but at the top, we see the first thing that we need is an average range. And that's the same as the average, or it works the same way as the average function or formula, where we select what we want to get the average of. So we want to get the average of these values. Next, when we type in a comma, it asks for a criteria range one, and then a criterion range one. And the criteria range is pretty much saying, in what range are we going to filter this information by? Or in what range are you going to tell me more about what the average is I'm supposed to get? So in this case, if we want the average for point guards, our criteria range is going to be, I'm, I'm going to X out, column C because that's where our positions lie, and then comma, and let me bring this back up. Now we're on our criterion one, so we want the average of everything that's in column D when the stuff in column C is equal to what? Well, criterion one is say we, we could just type in, quote, point guard, and that'll work just fine, and close the parentheses and click enter. And that would be the average sleep quality for the point guards. A more dynamic way to do this is to say instead of it equaling point or instead of it being point guard in quotes, we can say we want when the position in column C is equal to whatever this says right here. And right now point guard's in there. So the value will not change and we will get the same number. But what this enables us to do is potentially copy this formula and paste it other places where the value is not point guard in this cell, where it's a shooting guard or a center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock some cells in so that I can copy this formula and paste it around. What that means is if I were to copy this formula and paste it over, we get an error. And that's because at first we were looking at column D for our average value, which is sleep quality. Now we're looking at column E, and there's nothing in there. And then what we're trying to match up to the position in here is now column D, which is the sleep quality, and there's nothing that says shooting guard in our sleep quality column. So it just doesn't make sense. The way that you get around that, or the way that you deal with that, is you can lock cells in. That's what I term it, but pretty much you're fixing their position so that they don't move and then you or in the formula so that you can copy and paste the formula around. So I'm going to and we do that with dollar signs. Put a dollar sign before the D's and a dollar sign before the C's, but I'm not going to put dollar signs around 
H3 or because when I copy and paste this formula, I actually want this reference cell to move. So I want everything else to stay the same, but instead of looking at the position here that says point guard, I want to look at this position. But if I want to paste this formula up and down, then I might want to lock in the row so that the row does not move. So I just put a dollar sign before the C or before the three, but not the H, so that it will move side to side. And let's click enter. Now I'm going to copy this formula and paste it here and paste it here. And if we go inside one of them and click inside, we can see that now we're matching up the position to the shooting guard and we're matching up um, and we're still getting the sleep quality and the same thing in this one. If we go inside, see the position is being matched to whatever position is in here. And if we were to change this position to, I don't know, power forward, then the number will change. So that's the way that we can get an average value based on conditions, which in this case is position. But why I like this formula so much is because you don't have to change a thing going on in here. And you can get a maximum and a minimum value. Or you can get the sum or a total value of things. So let's say that we wanted to know the, the highest sleep quality rating and the lowest sleep quality rating for each of the positions. What we can do is we can copy the formula that we did already for the point guards, paste it up here, and because we did some good cell locking in our formula, we get the same thing. But now, the only difference is, instead of average ifs up here, we change it to max ifs, and click enter. And now we get the maximum value for point guards, and we can copy this formula paste it over and paste it over. Looks like the maximum value for each of those positions is 10. And what we can do now is we can copy this formula, max ifs, or we can copy the average ifs one, it'll be the same thing, and paste it beneath. And now we can get the minimum value just by changing max, or average, if you copy the average ifs one, to min. Now it's min ifs, and we can click enter. And the minimum value is 1, and paste, and paste, and the minimum value is 1 in each of those scenarios. And the final one is we can do sum ifs, or get a total value, if you will. It doesn't really make sense in this context, but you can still get a total value. So we'll copy this formula, which is min ifs. The same thing would happen with average ifs. And we paste it here. And we can change min to sum ifs and click enter and now we get a total value for whatever this metric is and we can copy this and paste it over and paste it over now we have a total value for each position now that's pretty cool uh, we, we got a lot out of that but what if we wanted to add another condition well it's super easy and we should have done this first if we wanted to copy and paste the formula around but what we can do Actually, we, we can do all of this at once with a find and replace, and I'll show you how to do that now, I guess. Let's say that we wanted to get the maximum, average, minimum, and total, for whatever reason, value for a specific date that we pick. Let's say we, we just want it for 10-15-2020. This is a date that we'll enter in and we'll get these values for, or just the average for. It doesn't matter, but they all work the same way. Let's start with one formula, and we'll add another condition. So we'll notice if we go back in here, we got the average range, criteria range one, criterion one, then criteria range two, and criterion two, and, and that's kind of how it how it goes. So for criterion range two, we would say now we want to look at the dates, and we'll put dollar signs around those columns. So now we want to look for something in the dates and whatever it is in, the, in that date column, it has to be equal to, and let's select this cell here, and let's lock this cell in completely, and close that off, and click enter. Now what we have, this value represents the average sleep quality for the point guards on this date. And what we'll notice is if we change this date to a different one, the value will change. 
So how can we, let's say that we made a mistake and um, like we did here and we created all these formulas and now we want to apply this to all of them. The easiest way to do it, and this is why I like these formulas so much is because they all act the same way, is we can do a find replace. And if we had more formulas, this might make more sense. But what we would do is we added this part to our formula that does not exist in, in these other ones. And what we could do here is we could copy this part that we added. And maybe we'll include, we'll include the parentheses too. And I'm going to paste it right in here so that we can all see it. Click Enter. So this is what we added to our original formula. And let's uh, remove it from here now. And click enter. Now we're back to not considering the date. And if we go to edit and find replace, let's select everything in here in this point guard column. And what we want to find is parenthesis to parenthesis, everything in there. And what we want to replace it with is parenthesis to parenthesis, but with a with our added and i clicked on the cell that we added our our the part of the formula in that considers date copied it and pasted it right there and if we select these cells in the point guard area and we go to instead of all sheets we could replace it in all sheets but we just go to the specific range that we selected and we check also search within formulas because that's what we're looking to replace something inside. And we go to replace all. It says it replaced four instances. And that's what we wanted because we had four formulas here that we were replacing. And we'll click done. And now, if you notice, in each of these formulas, if I click in each one, we still maintain the structure of them but we have the values for this date. And if I were to change this date back to 10, 15, 20, 20, click enter, we notice that the values change, or at least one of them did. Maybe we'll choose a different date too, 10, 17. And now we see all the values change. And now we can just do exactly what we just did before, where we copy all these formulas and paste them here and paste them here. And now we have a thing where we change the date and we'll get an average value for point guards, shooting guards, power forwards, and a maximum value for each of those positions and and all that fun stuff. So let's change it one more time, 10, 15, 20, 20, and we should see everything change. And that's great. So that's how average if average ifs works. And I really like it because you can do you can do uh, you can get the average with conditions, but you can also easily exchange it for other formulas if you need to. So it's more of a copy and paste job after you do your first one. And that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like it. Uh, if if you enjoy the content in general, please subscribe. It lets YouTube know that the content is valuable to someone at least, and then they'll send that video out or they'll make it accessible to other people um, that, that might need help also. So thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.